a boy or a girl. Stuart and Brenda are having a baby together. Brenda is seven months pregnant. Stuart and Brenda still don't know if the baby is a boy or a girl. The doctor had asked them if they wanted to know, and they said no. They do not want to know because they want to be surprised. They think that it will make the day of the birth more special. Their friends and families do not approve. Stuart's mom wants to know the sex of the baby because she wants to know what color bib to buy. If it's a boy, then she will buy a blue bib. If it's a girl, then she will buy a pink bib. Stuart's mom has been nagging him to ask the doctor about the baby's sex. Stuart decides to listen to his mom's suggestion. Brenda is furious. She tells Stuart not to listen to his mom. Stuart is conflicted. He loves his wife, but he also loves his mom. Stuart decides to secretly go to the hospital to ask the doctor for the information. The doctor tells Stuart that the baby is a boy. Stuart tells his mom the news. She is happy. She goes to the store to buy a lot of blue clothes. Stuart tells his mom that she can't tell Brenda. Stuart's mom agrees. The next day, Brenda has a baby shower. Stuart's mom is also invited. When it is time for Brenda to open the presents, Stuart's mom hands her her gift. Brenda slowly opens it and it is a blue backpack. At that moment, Brenda knows she is having a boy. Making Sushi at Home Danielle decided to make sushi with her brother Jonathan. They both love sushi and cooking. They thought this would be the perfect way to bond with each other and have fun. Sushi was something they never made. They needed to buy all the supplies to make the perfect sushi. They read recipes and watched videos on how to make sushi. Even if it was not perfect, Danielle was sure it would taste good. Jonathan was in charge of buying the supplies. He stopped by his local Japanese supermarket. This was one of his favorite markets because of its cheap prices and quality products. He started by looking for the seaweed and rice. He quickly found those in the same aisle. He then began to pick the seafood they would use. He decided on salmon, tuna, and eel. Danielle's favorite was salmon. He also got some cucumbers, carrots, and avocados to add extra flavor. Jonathan brought back his supplies home. They were ready to make the sushi. They set everything up in the kitchen. They were ready to roll. They divided the tasks. One person was in charge of preparing the sushi. The other person was in charge of rolling the sushi and cutting nicely into pieces. They needed to make enough for themselves and their parents. They even made extras. After all their hard work, they ate their delicious sushi and watched a movie together. The sushi was delicious and tasted really fresh. Their parents approved of their homemade sushi. Not a dancer. Edward really liked Nancy, the Sadie Hawkins dance, where girls ask guys out was coming up. In other dances, guys usually ask girls out. Natalie liked Edward too, but he did not know. Natalie was thinking about asking Edward to the dance, but she was shy. Her friends eventually convinced Natalie to ask him. During the lunch break, Natalie and her friends went up to Edward at his usual lunch table. Hi, Edward. This song is for you, Natalie said. He looked shocked. Natalie took out her guitar. Her friends took out their instruments too. Natalie played an original song. The song was about how they met on the first day of ninth grade. At the end of the song, Natalie asked, Will you go to Sadie with me? There was a long pause. Everyone around Edward was waiting for his response. Edward said yes, but he didn't look too happy. After school, Natalie asked Edward why he looked so upset when she asked him out. I really like you, but I'm not a dancer, Edward said. Natalie laughed. Who cares? No one is really good at dancing. The important thing is that you have fun. Natalie said. Edward nodded and decided to go out with her. At the dance, Edward felt awkward at first. Then, Natalie started dancing, and it was bad. Edward laughed and started dancing, too. Even though they were both awkward, they had fun. The Hairstyle Change A different hairstyle or color can change a person's entire look. It can make a person look better or worse. Jean was about to enter her first day of college. She wanted a new look. Her current hairstyle was nice, but it was boring. She had it since she was a ninth grader. Her hair right now was straight, long, and blonde. 
She went into the hair salon and asked the hairstylist, What kind of look are you going for? The hairstylist asked. I want to look like a model, Jean said. Well, we can add layers to your hair. We can also make your hair more blonde, the hairstylist said. That sounds good, Jean said. Jean sat in the chair while the hairstylist cut her hair. Jean couldn't see herself in the mirror because she didn't have her glasses on. She just trusted the hairstylist. An hour later, the hairstylist said, Done. Jean put on her glasses and looked at herself. She looked totally different. She liked it, but felt strange. She could barely even recognize herself. Jean asked her friends and family what they thought. Most of them liked it. They said it made her look edgier, but very different. In fact, when she met up with her friends, they asked who she was. One of them even tried calling the police when Jean showed up in front of her house. When Jean was shopping with her friends at the mall, a model scout came up to her and asked if she would consider modeling. Jean said she would think about it and took his business card. The new hairstyle was really working out for her. A Wonderful Surprise Janice is turning 21 today. Originally, she wanted to go to Las Vegas to celebrate. A lot of people go to Las Vegas for their 21st birthday because in the United States, you can legally drink at 21. However, Janice decided not to go because she wanted to save money to buy a new car. Janice decided that she just wanted to go to a nice restaurant with her friends. Janice's birthday was on a Tuesday, and she had class and work on Tuesdays. She always walked to class with her friend Austin. When she and Austin met up, she thought he would wish her a happy birthday, but he didn't. Austin has known her for years, and he would always remember her birthday. Janice tried to drop hints. I wonder what today is, she said. Just a Tuesday, nothing special. Janice was upset. She ignored him during class. After class, Janice went to work. She expected a few birthday cards or a cake, but nothing. She was surprised, because employees would always get something for their birthdays. This made Janice upset. She didn't even want to go out to eat for her birthday anymore. When Janice got home, she questioned if anyone even cared about her. Her friend Lisa called her. Hey, can you open the door? We're here, Lisa said. I don't want to go out anymore, Janice said. Why not? Can you just open the door? We're already here, Lisa said. Janice opened the door. Surprise, her friends yelled. They had a puppy in their hands. Ruby's Role Model Ruby always looked up to her cousin Wanda. Ruby was an only child in her family, so she saw Wanda as an older sister. Wanda was beautiful, smart, and talented. She had straight A's, played the piano, and had so many friends. Wanda also had a great sense of style. It was classy yet cute. Ruby was still in high school, but she knew she wanted to go to the same university as Wanda did. Wanda knew that Ruby looked up to her, and she appreciated that. For Christmas, Wanda got Ruby a sweater with her university's logo on it. Ruby was so happy when she got the sweater, she put it on immediately and wore it almost every day. One day in class, Ruby raised her hand to answer the teacher's question, and the teacher accidentally called her Wanda. I'm sorry, you just look a lot like her, the teacher said. Don't apologize. I'm flattered, Ruby said. Ruby was even in the same clubs in high school as Wanda was. Sometimes people made fun of Wanda for not having her own personality. However, the truth was Ruby was different from Wanda. Ruby was more goofy and girly. When college admission decisions came out, Ruby was so anxious to check the website to see if she got in. She closed her eyes and slowly opened them. She found out she got accepted. She called Wanda to thank her for reading her application. The next day, Wanda took Ruby to look at the school. Not so average. Julia always felt average. She did not have any special talents. But she also was not bad at anything in particular. She always got B's in class. She was neither fat nor skinny. She could run a mile, but not much more. Most people felt neutral about her. She wore nice clothes, but nothing unique. She wanted to be better than average at something. But whenever she tried, she fell short. When she took an advanced math class, she found herself struggling. 
She joined the basketball team, but she was not very good. As Julia was walking to school, she suddenly felt something in her head. It didn't hurt, so it was not a headache. All of a sudden, she saw a cat stuck in a tree in her mind. It was almost like a vision. That was weird, she thought. She continued walking to school. Then, she saw a cat just like the one in her vision. It climbed up the tree and could not come back down. It was stuck. Julia realized that she could see the future. Julia would get her visions randomly. She wished she could control it, but she could not. Sometimes she would get five a day, and other times she would get them every two weeks. Julia loved her visions, though. She felt that it was her special power that gave her advantages. One time she had a vision that her friend was going to die in a car accident, so Julia made her friend not drive that day. Julia did not tell anyone about her visions. She felt like people would not believe her. Moving into a new apartment. Brenda was moving into her apartment today. She needed to bring in a lot of things since the apartment was empty. There was no way she could fly with such large items. She needed to go shopping for a couch and a desk. Brenda decided this would be a perfect opportunity to road trip with her family. They could help her move into her new apartment. Her new apartment was located three hours from her current house. Brenda was excited about moving and starting her new year. She was moving to an apartment near her school. She would be living there with three new people she had never met. She was a little nervous to meet them. She was scared that she might not like them or they might not like her. She was excited also. She was excited for what the new year would bring. The new year could be filled with a lot of new memories and exciting events. Brenda made a list of things she needed to buy just in case she forgot anything. She separated her list by categories. She had a lot of stuff from home that she could bring to save money. She took her chair and her laptop from home. She also brought a lot of clothes and cooking supplies. Her parents agreed to help her shop for furniture once they got there. They were going to help her pick her bed frame and her mattress. She also needed to get a new couch for the living room. Although stressful, Brenda was ready to tackle it all. The first date. I have been in the same math class as Eric for a few months now. He always helps me on my homework. He is extremely nice and funny. One day, I decided to ask Eric if he wanted to go out with me to the mall. I was so happy when he said yes. I was excited. This would be my first date. I was also nervous since I had never been on a date. I did not know what to do or how to act. I hoped I would figure it out. I planned our date to the minute. I wanted to be prepared and know exactly what to do. We were going to the mall on Saturday at noon. He was going to pick me up and drive to the mall, where we would get food and then shop at our favorite stores. However, when the day came, everything went wrong. First of all, I could not find my favorite outfit that I had planned on wearing. I settled for a clean T-shirt and some jeans. He was also late because his car got a flat tire on the way to my house. I was scared about what else could go wrong. He apologized about being late, and I forgave him. We talked in the car and played music as we drove. We had a good conversation about school, traveling, and family. He was easy to talk to. I was so relieved. The date ended up being really fun. We had a good time eating and shopping at the mall. Too old for trick or treating. Kelly's favorite holiday is Halloween. She loved pumpkin pie, pumpkin spice latte, dressing up. Scary movies and trick or treating. The sad thing, however, is that Kelly knows that she is too old for trick or treating. She is now 21 years old. She loved how she could get different kinds of candy for free. This Halloween, Kelly was going to babysit her 10-year-old cousin Albert and his friends. Kelly dressed up as a pirate. Her cousin and his friends dressed up as ghosts. Albert and his friends made Halloween-themed cupcakes. The frosting was orange and the sprinkles on top were black. Afterwards, they carved pumpkins. Albert asked, "What should we do now, Kelly? Why don't you go trick or treating?" She suggested. "I'm too scared to talk to strangers," Albert said. "Don't worry, I will go with you," Kelly said. All of them went to the house to the right. They knocked on the door and said, "Trick or treat." 
The couple smiled and gave the kids a chocolate bar. Kelly wished they gave her one. They went to the next house, and the family gave them gummy worms. The next house they went to was interesting. The couple gave them money. Kelly definitely wanted some. They went to a total of ten houses and got more than ten different types of candy. They all went back to Kelly's house. Kelly was sad looking at all their candy. Then, Albert and his friends gave Kelly a hug and said they loved hanging out with her. A group of friends. Kathy, Denise, Lauren, Andre, Harrison, and David are best friends. They all live in San Francisco. They live in different places and have different jobs. But at the end of their work day, they would meet up in the same cafe. They also had different personalities, but somehow they would make it work. Kathy is a struggling writer. She is working on a fantasy novel and trying to get it published. Denise is a medical student at the University of California, San Francisco. Lauren is a TV screenwriter. Andre is also a medical student at the University of California, San Francisco. Harrison is an investment banker. David is a graphic designer. How did they all meet? Kathy and Denise were friends in college, and they moved to San Francisco together. They bumped into Lauren at a wine tasting event. The three of them became friends. Denise and Andre met at medical school, and Denise invited Andre to hang out with Kathy and Lauren at the museum. Lauren's cousin is Harrison. Harrison wanted a website for a company he worked at and hired David to design it. Lauren invited Harrison and David to come to the museum, too. When the six of them met up, they instantly became friends. Sometimes their different personalities caused fights. Kathy was shy and traditional. Denise was outspoken. Lauren was kind but also naive. Andre was funny. Harrison was smart but also greedy. David was bossy but also caring. Even though they were different, though, they all cared about each other. Being too superstitious. Mildred was very superstitious. She believed that black cats and walking under ladders were unlucky. Her friends and family would make fun of her for her being so superstitious. Her brother tried to explain to her that superstitions are not real. She never believed him, though. There have even been times when she went out of her way because of superstitions. One time, Mildred was very scared to take a math test. There is a superstition that says that carrying a rabbit's foot brings good luck. Although Mildred could not get a real rabbit's foot, she bought a keychain of a rabbit's foot. Another time, Mildred's friends invited her to get pizza at a new restaurant. Mildred was about to go inside the restaurant when she saw the restaurant's phone number included 666. 666 is considered to be unlucky, so she left. Another time it was raining pretty hard. When Mildred went into the mall, she noticed that a woman still had her umbrella opened. An open umbrella indoors is supposed to be bad luck. She ran up to the woman and asked if she could close her umbrella. The woman looked at her with a disturbed face. Don't tell me what to do, she said. The woman continued to walk around the mall with her umbrella open, just to annoy Mildred, who wanted to leave the mall immediately to avoid any bad luck. Her mom convinced her to stay. Mildred, nothing bad is going to happen, she said. Mildred stayed in the mall for four hours. Her mom was right. Nothing bad happened. On a healthy diet. It was hard to eat healthy at school. It was even harder when Jessica entered college. Everywhere she went, it seems as if she was surrounded by unhealthy food. From the dining hall pizza to the coffee shops at every corner, it was hard for her to eat healthy every day. She also had to balance many activities and classes. She felt she had no time to cook or find healthy food. She often stopped at fast food places and got quick snacks. The unhealthy food often left her feeling tired. She did not have the energy at the end of the day and often felt sleepy. She decided she needed to alter her eating habits. She wanted to stop eating so unhealthily, but she did not know how. She decided to start by cutting out coffee. At first it was hard since she drank coffee almost every day. By the end of the week, she felt better. She was also saving a lot of money by not having to buy a drink every day, which quickly added up. The next step she took was to incorporate more healthy food into her diet. Instead of eating burgers and sandwiches so often, she decided to eat salads every other day. 
she found that salads were just as quick and cheap as burgers. This made her feel more refreshed and energized. She found herself less sleepy and more focused in class. The salad even tasted better than the burger. Jessica felt so good with her diet change, she planned on cooking once a week every week. She felt ambitious and loved the change she was making. Going to teach abroad. Catherine did not know what to do this summer. All her friends either had a job or were going traveling. Catherine was nervous because she did not hear back from any of the organizations she applied for. She applied to a lot of different internships and jobs. The wait was long and agonizing for her. Finally, she received an email. The email congratulated her on getting the internship, which was a teaching position in Japan. She was going to be teaching lessons on leadership in Japan to young high school students. Catherine was so excited to receive this internship. This was her top choice. She was nervous she would not get it because there were many applicants. It was extremely competitive. She was excited to travel and also meet many high school students. Catherine was passionate about education and leadership. This internship was perfect for her. She was nervous to travel abroad since this was her first time. She did not know what to expect in a foreign country. She also did not speak Japanese, which may be challenging for her. The challenges did not scare her. She was ready for the internship. She planned her trip early and began to make lists of things she needed to bring and what she needed to do. She also met with past interns and asked them about their experiences. She wanted to be as prepared for the trip as possible. Catherine wanted to do the best job she could and make a big impact on the students. A Lonely Puppy Rebecca was going on her daily jog when she saw a lonely puppy on the sidewalk. The puppy was alone. She did not see its owner anywhere in sight. The puppy had a collar. She checked the collar for an address or identification, but there was none. The puppy followed her and began to play with her. The puppy seemed to really like Rebecca. Rebecca loved dogs and did not mind at all. She wanted to help this puppy find its owner. She did not want to just abandon him. She decided to take a picture of the dog and post flyers around her town. She hoped that the puppy was local to the area. For the time being, she took the puppy home. She bought dog food and prepared a nice area for the puppy to sleep. The puppy seemed confused in its new environment. It was a little shy, but it showed a liking to Rebecca. The next day, Rebecca posted flyers all over town. She added her phone number in case anyone wanted to contact her about the dog. She hoped that she could find its owner. She decided to take the dog for a walk. She started to form a connection with the dog, but she knew she could not keep him. A few hours later, a woman contacted her about the dog. She was so relieved Rebecca had found him. Rebecca returned the puppy to the woman and could see how happy both of them were. Rebecca felt great and decided she would get a puppy in the future. The Night Shift Ophelia was a night shift worker at a hospital. This meant that she worked late at night. Ophelia's work schedule was 9 p.m. to 4 a.m. Ophelia would sleep during the day while most people were at work. For the first year of work, Ophelia had a hard time adjusting to the schedule. She had trouble sleeping during the afternoon. She was upset that she had to miss out on social events her friends hosted. It's still hard for Ophelia to adjust, but she is better at it. When she comes back from work, she goes to the gym for a few hours. Then she practices her knitting skills. Afterwards, she would make herself a healthy meal. Night shift workers often eat unhealthier than day shift workers. After lunch, she would watch her favorite TV show. After that, she would sleep. The hospital informed the employees that they could send requests to change the time of their shift. Ophelia was excited about this and immediately sent in a request to change her shift. A couple weeks later, the manager gave Ophelia a letter. The letter stated that her request was rejected. Ophelia was shocked. She went to her manager and asked him why. She said that many night shift workers who requested an earlier shift were elderly. Ophelia was only 25. The manager thought that the older employees needed an earlier shift more than Ophelia did. Ophelia was mad at first, but she thought about the older employees. Their bones were aching and they're tired. They do need it more than her. A 
a long-distance relationship. Eddie and Cynthia both went to the same high school. They had liked each other since ninth grade. Eddie and Cynthia met in math class. Cynthia was really good at math. She always scored the highest out of everyone. Eddie was having trouble with math. He kept getting Fs. If he didn't bring his grade up to a C, he would have to repeat the class. The teacher asked Cynthia to help Eddie out for extra credit, and she said yes. Every day after school for two hours, Cynthia would help him. Eddie fell in love with her. He ended up with a B in the class. Eddie took Cynthia out to dinner to thank her. At dinner, they both fell for each other. They started dating. Everything was good. They never had fights and even talked about getting married one day. When senior year came around, though, they had to apply to college, and they didn't want to stop each other from going places. But they both wanted to stay together. Cynthia got into Harvard and wanted to major in math. Eddie did not get into Harvard. He got accepted to a school near Harvard, but thought it would be better for him to stay closer to home. Cynthia ended up going to Harvard, and Eddie ended up going to Florida State University. They tried to have a long-distance relationship, but it was hard. They broke up after their first year of college. After they graduated, however, they both worked in Florida. They got back together. Confidence is key. Nicole was always insecure about herself. She didn't like how she looked. She thought she was too tall and skinny. People would always ask her how tall she is. She tried to gain weight, but she never could. Most people would love to be in Nicole's situation, though. Nicole didn't like how she was so shy. She wished she could easily talk to people and make new friends. Nicole didn't like her voice. She thought it was too low. Nicole's confidence was so low that her friends started to get annoyed with her. They kept telling her that she was fine, but Nicole would deny it. Nicole's mom encouraged her to join a sports team at school. Nicole did not want to because she didn't want to get rejected. After days of convincing, Nicole finally gave in to her mother's request. Nicole decided to try it out for the basketball team. She played when she was younger, but has not played in five years. It helped that Nicole was tall. When Nicole went to tryouts, she looked at all the people she was competing against. She started to compare herself to the other girls. They were all shorter than her, but they were more confident. Nicole tried to put them out of her mind. The coach asked the girls to shoot free throws, run short distance, then finally asked them to play a game. Nicole was doing well. She was surprised. She didn't realize that she still had basketball skills. Nicole made the team and felt more confident about herself. She knew she was good at something. Irene's Secret Irene has a secret. Her mom is the principal at her high school. She doesn't want anyone to know because her classmates would think that she gets special treatment. Not even her friends know about the secret. When her friends ask to go over to her house, she just says that her parents don't allow guests. Irene's mom also never told anyone that her daughter goes to the high school she works at. Bring Your Mom to Campus Day was coming up, and Irene usually told her friends in the past that her mom was out of town. What does your mom even do? her friend asked. She is a cancer researcher, so she travels a lot. Funny enough, Irene's mom was always at Bring Your Mom to Campus Day. The vice principal once asked her, Do you have a daughter? Irene's mom said, Yes, she is in college now. Irene was very close to getting an A in her calculus class. There was only one exam left. Irene would have to get 100% on the exam to push her grade to an A. The teacher offered the students extra credit if they brought their mom to bring your mom to campus day. Irene decided that this year was going to be the year that she told her secret to everyone. Irene told her mom that she wanted to tell everyone about their relationship. Irene's mom agreed. On bring your mom to campus day, Irene brought her mom to her calculus class. Hi, our principal. What brings you here? asked the calculus teacher. I'm actually Irene's mom, she said. At the arcade. Timothy loved to play games ever since he was young. He was good at almost every single game. He was extremely competitive and hated to lose. He decided to go to the arcade to put his skills to the test. He thought this would be a fun way to use his skills and be rewarded. 
He invited all his friends to come since he did not want to go alone. At the arcade there were all types of games. The games ranged from beginner to expert level. Some of the games required no skills and just pure luck. Timothy wanted to try the games that were not based on luck. He decided to warm up with claw machines. He thought these required coordination and precision. However, he soon realized these machines relied a little bit on luck to pick up the prize. He quickly moved on to shooting target games. He also played basketball games. Basketball was more suited towards his skills. He was able to win prizes in both. He also played games with his friends. It was fun competing against them, even when he lost. Sometimes he felt discouraged when he lost, but he kept trying. At the end of the day, he had many prizes to take home. He realized that he had spent a lot of money playing these games. Timothy told his friends that he had a fun time and hopes to come again, but not too often. He traded prizes with his friends and they all took a photo to remember this day. Timothy loved to play games ever since he was young. He was good at almost every single game. He was extremely competitive and hated to lose. He decided to go to the arcade to put his skills to the test. He thought this would be a fun way to use his skills and be rewarded. He invited all his friends to come since he did not want to go alone. At the arcade there were all types of games. The games ranged from beginner to expert level. Some of the games required no skills and just pure luck. Timothy wanted to try the games that were not based on luck. He decided to warm up with claw machines. He thought these required coordination and precision. However, he soon realized these machines relied a little bit on luck to pick up the prize. He quickly moved on to shooting target games. He also played basketball games. Basketball was more suited towards his skills. He was able to win prizes in both. He also played games with his friends. It was fun competing against them, even when he lost. Sometimes he felt discouraged when he lost, but he kept trying. At the end of the day, he had many prizes to take home. He realized that he had spent a lot of money playing these games. Timothy told his friends that he had a fun time and hopes to come again, but not too often. He traded prizes with his friends and they all took a photo to remember this day. A study group. Ricky was good at everything. He had always gotten A's in all his classes. He excelled in all subjects and never had any trouble with the material. This year, he was taking calculus. This was a subject he had never taken before. He was struggling a lot and did not understand the material. His teacher handed his first test back. Ricky was shocked at his score. He had failed the test. It was his first time to fail anything. Ricky did not know what to do. He did not want to ask for help because he did not know how. This was his first time struggling and he had no idea how to approach his problem. He started talking to the teacher. He asked the teacher if there was a mistake or if there was any way he could retake the test. The teacher explained to him that it was reasonable that he did not do well on the first test. She gave a list of books and websites that may help him and also referred him to some tutors. Another suggestion she made was to reach out to friends and form a study group. He liked the idea of a study group because he felt more comfortable asking his friends for help. He asked his friends if they would like to form a study group. They loved the idea. They also were relieved since they were also struggling with calculus. They decided to meet twice a week at their school's library. They did homework together and went through each problem step by step. Before the next test, they studied extra long. They did several practice problems and helped each other along the process. Perhaps Ricky would not get everything correct on the next test, but he felt more confident. Ricky was good at everything. He had always gotten A's in all his classes. He excelled in all subjects and never had any trouble with the material. This year, he was taking calculus. This was a subject he had never taken before. He was struggling a lot and did not understand the material. His teacher handed his first test back. Ricky was shocked at his score. He had failed the test. It was his first time to fail anything. Ricky did not know what to do. He did not want to ask for help because he did not know how. This was his first time struggling and he had no idea how to approach his problem. He started talking to the teacher. He asked the teacher if there was a mistake or if there was any way he could retake the test. The teacher explained to him that it was reasonable that he did not do well on the first test. 
She gave a list of books and websites that may help him and also referred him to some tutors. Another suggestion she made was to reach out to friends and form a study group. He liked the idea of a study group because he felt more comfortable asking his friends for help. He asked his friends if they would like to form a study group. They loved the idea. They also were relieved since they were also struggling with calculus. They decided to meet twice a week at their school's library. They did homework together and went through each problem step by step. Before the next test, they studied extra long. They did several practice problems and helped each other along the process. Perhaps Ricky would not get everything correct on the next test, but he felt more confident.